Hi, for the demo today, I'm going to be showing you some mark making techniques that I use in my work. Some of these may be familiar to you and some may be quite unusual. So to start off with, I've divided my watercolour paper into six sections. We're also going to employ a little bit of colour theory here. I'm going to be working with complementary colours, that is colours opposite one another on the colour wheel. You might notice here that blue is blank. This is why I want to show you how to apply some colour without using the brush. Very quick way of applying. Get a kitchen towel, pop it in the water, pick up some of the blue, and on we go. This is great fun. Love it. You tend to get very messy as well, which is good. Always a good thing. Pick up some more blue. And there we have the blue square. So you've got the three primaries at the top and their complementary colours on the bottom. So now we come to the fun bit, the mark making. I'm going to start off, you've probably all seen bubble wrap. I've got three different sizes of bubble wrap here. I use these a lot in my florals. So I'm going to put the green onto the dab it on and hopefully it will work. Get it nice. Oh, not too good. <laughs> Try again. Maybe I've got too much colour, but you can see this also gives the impression of lupins or something like that. Then we go into the, the second height. Then dab it on. On and pull off. Okay, you see the lovely floral shapes. The bigger blooms, I've got a big piece here, which we'll put on just to show you the difference in sizes. And on that goes. It's almost like printmaking. So you can see here the lovely florals that actually show through. Now something that you probably haven't used before, Lego. We can all raid our boys and girls toy cupboard for this. Dab the paint on. And off we go. So you can see, again, we have more of a linear pattern there. Let me go for the bigger Lego. Children's toys are not very safe when I'm around. And on. Wow. And then the jumbo. Okay. Dab it on. And off we go. So you can see the variety of different marks that all these toys make. So I'm going to move on now. I'm going to go on to the yellow because I want the blue to dry a little bit. And we have here some familiar objects. What a lovely excuse to open a bottle of beer on a hot day. You need it for your art. So, I'm going to scrunch it all into the violet. I told you it got messy. And on we go. Printing all the time. Again. You can see the print. Don't bother too much about if there's more paint on or not. It makes the uh, subject interesting. And another excuse, a wine top. There we go. This probably works better. So push it on and then pull it off. Like that. You get lovely textures in it. And then one of my favourites, a hair roller. Mm. This is even better. Scrunch it on, and this is fantastic for reeds and grasses. And you just on like that. And you can put multiple colours on and just scrub it along like that. Makes fantastic grasses instead of having to do every single stroke at once. Now we come to an interesting bit in the middle. I think it's dry, okay. This I picked up from a haberdasheries. It's a piece of ribbon with holes in it, and I think you can do a similar thing with uh, sequin waste. So 
So I've got this, I've got my palette knife, and I'm going to stencil the orange through. Lovely. I'm using um, Liquidex Heavy Body, which was great paint to use. You can work on it like this and you can thin it down to make lovely glazes. Pull it off. Wow. Okay, and turn over and stamp the negative shape. There you go. Fantastic mark making tools, these. Okay, so now we come on to more linear marks at the bottom. Credit cards. We've all got these. We've all cut them up at some stage. So here we are again. My husband doesn't know about this. Okay. Lay it on. Not too much. I'm going to make, I use this a lot in windmills. You can lay it on and almost turn it full circle, little circles, etc. Make, oops, fence posts, and even make very, very fine lines with it. Drag it up, down, across. Brilliant marks. Right, moving on to the middle bit. Again, we're going to do some stenciling. And this is a piece of um, garden trellis. You can use anything, garden trellis. I've got also here a piece of pizza base that I nicked from the base of a pizza. And we're going to stencil the blue. Okay, on to the garden trellis. More blue. Okay, and done. I'm not going to do a negative shape with this because of the raised surface. I'll just show you, it won't turn out as negative. See, it just makes individual marks. So, uh, where are we? The pizza base, just to give you an idea. Okay, stencil it on. And off again, you can see the marks it makes. Ready in the toolbox, uh, the children's toy box again. I've got here a wheel. Okay, you put the paint on the wheel. I told you painting mixed 3D would be fun. And here we go. Look at those marks, fabulous. There you go, marks with the wheel. And then lastly, we're coming on to the children's toy box again, a piece of railway track. So I'm going to uh, lay the colour on with a palette knife, although hopefully it will lay on OK. And on we go. Press hard. This is great for if you're showing buildings or anything like that. Just get that um, up here. Probably put a bit too much paint on it. And then the comb. Pick up your paint. Your comb. Squeeze it across and comb through. Wonderful marks you make using the, the edge of the comb. Can make some nice, all nice marks. And then finally, we have this is a piece of plastic from the electric lawnmower. Nothing is safe in my house. Dab it on and more marks. There you go. And that's basically. It. So I hope I've given you some insight in the way I work with mixed media. 
the marks that are possible to be made. And I will show you an example of some of the florals I've done using these marks. OK, so this is an example of a study I did with my students using all the, uh, the florals, the bubble wrap, uh, the Lego and the credit card marks, which you can see going across. Makes a lovely bouquet. This is another study I did with my students. This shows you the linear marks that I showed you earlier, using the stencil here, the pizza-based stencil there, and also the tyre here, the tyre marks here. So I hope that you can see how versatile mixed media is and what we can make out of everyday objects. I hope you've enjoyed the session today, and if you need any more information, you can contact me via the SAA website. Thank you. <laughs>